Hello guys, welcome back to the wrap up for the 23rd of August 2019 here in this series where we take trade ideas back tester. We back test what's working currently in the market. We turn that into watch lists to be traded by our bot next week. Hold those for five days, close them at the end of the five days, start again. So we've been doing that for um, probably nine months now. So again, go back on the channel, the, the videos with this name, you can see how things have gone from there. Uh, more and more, the, the more that I'm doing outside of trading in the trading world, the more I love this strategy because of the hands-off nature. I don't feel like I'm run over by a Mack truck at the end of every day. Um, so quickly taking a look here at the SPY. Still in this range. It was a uh, it was a wild week for sure. Talks about tariffs and you know interest rates and the same kind of story we've been fed for a long time here. Uh, really, we've been talking about this 280 area and the 300. You know, call it 295 to 300 area since we've you know I started this weekly analysis and it still kind of is holding true. You know, we've had some breaks below it and some pops above it. But all in all, holding pretty steady. So until one of these resolves significantly, either way, I'm not too interested. It's just a, a market and a range in August. Um, however, this is kind of looking like a bear flag now. And we did have a fair amount of increased volume on this down move. You can see, you know, the first four days of this week, we chopped around. And then we had this kind of push lower here. Um, on the weekly chart, it actually looks pretty bad. We had a, a hammer candle followed by an indecision candle or a doji or a spinning top or whatever you like to call it. And then a down push after this. Um, so really the, the first areas to watch is obviously the low of these two weekly candles with corresponds to the low here, which is also the 200 period moving average here. Get out of here. The this 200 period here, these lows, and then this 280 area we've been talking about. Big level here, uh, which means generally one or two things when you have a huge level like that. You're going to get a lot of people defending it, or those people are going to give up entirely, and the thing's just going to break below, and there may be a lot of short interest in there. So again, that's what I'm watching. Um, you know, Looking at the major indices, same kind of thing. Gold and silver and the VIX are the only things that are kind of higher over the last five days. Everything else is lower, which is what we expect to see in this market. So let's quickly go over what happened last week. Um, last week, IPAR, we were looking short. Actually just triggered here on Friday. Broke through there. Oh, sorry. Just a, a summary this week. 500. It was like 600 when I closed everything per hundred dollars traded. So again, multiply that out by what kind of size you are, but another good week uh, under the belts. Um, so yeah, IPAR triggered on Friday. So this was basically like a day trade that happened, triggered here, and then we closed it out here at the lows. So um, it's a good one there. AGIO, we were basically looking for this breakdown that happened here and then pulled back up into this prior uh, support, now resistance. We were looking at that to coil over, it's exactly what happened, and we close kind of near the near the lows here. But again, as per the rules, we exit everything on Friday, we enjoy our weekend, and then build this list and have everything kind of traded on Monday. Uh, PINC was a bit of a, a, bit of a choppy one here. Uh, it broke here on Monday, and then it put in this um, hanging man or reverse hammer on Tuesday and then kind of grind it down for the rest of the week there. So um, next here is Len, a uh, very good one here on Len. We essentially were just watching this bull flag, had this strong push up and then this kind of sideways trend here a break of that it pulled back ever so slightly to get us in which was fantastic um, we almost missed this one entirely because of a gap and then just up it went 
Um, last but not least for last week is M H O. Uh, long trade, we were looking for it to break above this area of resistance here. It did that and then came back down. So pretty much a break even trade there. Let's quickly take a look at what we're watching for next week. Uh, first on the short side, PWR, essentially a bear flag. And you notice the kind of double bottoming tail that's happening here. This tweezer pattern on the weekly chart. You know, we also saw that on the weekly chart of the SPY, and I said if we break that area, it could lead to more selling. Same kind of thing we're looking for here. Uh, first, we see just a handful of indecision candles in this downtrend, short-term moving average kind of uh, catching up. And on the weekly, we're seeing this, uh, this bear flag here. So just keeping an eye to see if we break down this and then continue to push lower here. Jack in the box. This is um, essentially a, an into the gap type play. If you take a look here, you can see that we gapped up, tried to push over this level, put in a little possible bull trap here, and now we're holding below that. So if we break under this area, we could continue lower. Also, the 200 week moving average is right here as well, along with a lot of resistance here. So you know, it could be just some profit taking. We fill into the gap a bit more before we move higher. Uh, who knows? Again, our time frame is very important. You know, that's why you build a strategy around these type of rules. We know that that strategy is sometime throughout the week, close on Friday. So we're trying to predict essentially what this next weekly candle is going to look like, right? So the, basically we're saying if it breaks a low of this pre previous weekly candle, then we expect to see a push down. And if it just kind of pushes up here without us, then we're not in. Uh, SNPS, this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, essentially what I'm seeing here is these two topping tails right at this area of resistance. So again, uh, Brian Shannon, if you don't know who he is, uh, great technical analyst, one of the guys that I learned technical analysis from always says, from failed moves come fast moves. And that's essentially what we're seeing here, I hope, where we have this kind of push up and we have a push up to break new highs, it happened on earnings, it happened on volume, and then failed. Then the next day they tried again, and then they failed. So two of these things together makes me think that we could sell a little bit further here if we get some continuation and uh, you know possibly push down here as well. So a little bit of a fake out play there. Last but not least, we're looking at FN, which gap down here on earnings, uh, pushed up, you know, very weakly and um, very indecision, right? You know that I look a lot at tails, topping tails and bottoming tails. And, you know, we kind of pushed up, but you can see how the volume is decreasing every time there's a push up with any strength, there's a big wick that comes. So I think if we break down here, the only support we have is all the way down here. Uh, for the long side, we're looking at CVLT, kind of an opposite of SMPS there, where we've pushed under this area of resistance on this uh, downward wedge here. We pushed into this area resistance and we came back as well as just the oversold nature all the way from 70 down to 41. So almost getting cut in half. So it just looks like it may be time for a little short covering bounce and there's, you know, a nice void or blue skies until this area. HRL. Uh, HRL is a gap out. So let's first take a look at the weekly on this, right? We have this ascending triangle here. We broke out, but then pulled back on uh, on this week. But if you look at the intraweek action, you can see we gapped up here on earnings. But unlike the ones I was talking about before, when we sold down to fill the gap, buyers came in. Then we came here on Friday, we sold down, filled the gaps, and then buyers came in. So there looks to be some accumulation going on here. If that continues and we push higher, we have a potential to hit up here at highs there, at least test them. Um, ESV, basically looking at the candle that happened today. So massive, massive pullback here. 
uh, from the highs of 15 all the way down to here where we bounced off the uh, 200 day moving average and then we pulled back again we bounced off the 200 day moving average again so remember what the spy for today looked like that candle right ugly red high volume down and then back to esv nice and strong opened at the bottom closed at the top uh, i think if we break this we've got some continuation and there could be a nice strong kind of push up from here uh, ten dollars or, or higher uh, qsr qsr is a bit of an unusual one but i'm just kind of riding this incredibly strong trend on the weekly chart we had a couple week pullback and a doji here and a doji here looking at the intraday chart you can see just higher lows right and so far higher highs um, if you're an Elliott wave guy, this could be a one, two, three, four, and then a possible fifth wave higher. It just looks like the run isn't done yet. And then this big doji that happened here on Friday. So above this doji, I think we could get moving. So that is it for this week. Uh, next week, I have one trading video that I'm going to edit down. Uh, it got a little bit long and rambly. So that will be up next week. And then another back to basics. We didn't record one this week, but we're going to record one next week. So I'll upload it then as well. Um, again, thanks you guys for stopping by. And until I see you next time, trade safe.